the CL13B Mark VI. It outruns all sabers, it out accelerates all sabers, and it outturns most sabers except for the F40. But the F40 does suffer from the longer wings, so the roll is a bit worse, as well as the compression. First of all, I want to thank Gaijin for sending me the CL13B for the test drive. I didn't have to grind it, I didn't have to spade it, and it saves me a lot of time. Of course, I still will go into the, the spading process, as I do know which mods are the best. Mostly because, well, it's a Sabre, I've flown these things a ah, reasonable amount. But without further ado, let's get right into the review. Everything I am about to say is with the conventional loadout, the one I recommend for 20 minutes of fuel, and it's with A9Bs. It is the fastest subsonic in the game. It beats the previous MiG-17 record of 1121 with 1122. Of course, when your pilot is called Melvin and you're flying on Spain in the night, then it might do 1123, but it's highly dependent on the map. Considering its engine and the slats and the better roll rate than all the other sabers, I would say that this is the most maneuverable saber in the game. Of course, the A5 might be a little bit more nimble, but it doesn't have the staying power because of its engine, so in a long-term dogfight, I will still give the edge to the CL-13B. The firepower isn't the best in the world however, of course 650 cals they still do quite a little bit of damage but it's not like they used to do pre-pads, they did change the damage models a little bit and I can feel a difference in the gun power. This is also why I do take the AIM-9Bs when you get people that don't pay attention, you can blast them out of the sky with a missile and you don't have to waste ammo on them. For the climb rate slash acceleration, I made a little chart which I will pull up on the screen right now. I have the CL-13A, the CL-13B+, plus, which is with missiles, the CL-13B-, minus, which is without missiles, and the F-40, which speaks for itself. So what I did with this graph was, I took off, I recorded the, the seconds it would take me to reach a certain speed, I put them all in a graph, and this is what you see right now. And to no one's surprise, the CL-13B without the missiles won, the CL-13B with the missiles is 7 kph faster and has a little bit less acceleration, but it's still miles ahead. The CL-13A and the F-40, especially at the higher speeds where the drag starts to matter more and this engine really pushes through. This is again all with 20 minutes of fuel. A CL-13A with minimum fuel keeps up with you rather well, especially when you have the missiles on. And the F-40 with minimum fuel, you will still out accelerate it when you have the missiles on, which is quite handy to know. Of course you can stay in the fight much longer because of your fuel, but once you get them on you, you might be more maneuverable than the CL-13A, but when he has min fuel, I'm gonna say good luck getting him off, because it's not going to happen unless he's a brainlet. I've tried all the different belts for the 50 cals and I didn't feel too much different, so I'd say start with the compressor, as always, because the belts aren't that important. Then I would go with the rockets, because if you need to ground pound, it's worth it. You won't need the boosters and the airframe does very little to the performance. Then I would go for the engine as always again, then go for either the wing repair or the bombs, it depends if you want to go for the missiles or not, but the wing repair does add a substantial amount on your performance. Then you can go for the G-suit or the AIM-9Bs, of course it's a bit of preference here, the cover does add the most performance, the airframe and the fuselage repair are pretty much useless, you won't need the boosters, so it's up to you, do you want the missile, do you want to be able to turn better, or do you want to be able to go faster? So it's a bit up to you, it, it doesn't really matter what you take, mostly due to the nature of this plane. I would give this thing a solid 8 or 9 out of 10, only reason I didn't give it a 10 is because the T2s and shit can really run you down and ruin your day. For the talisman, you won't really need it. For grinding it's not really very worth it, because even stock you will outperform a lot of sabers if you run minimum fuel and 20 minutes of fuel, you'll still be very competitive. It, it's more or less a CL Mark A. But if you still not have a lot of tier 5s and you still need to grind the MiG-19 and, and stuff like that, then by all means this will be a very grain grinder for you. And yes, it's definitely worth it. But the intro is going on for quite some time now, so let's go straight into the match. Now it's time to get a little bit of altitude, because well, you don't want people diving on you. You might be faster than most people, but you still get people like the CLA, the F2 Sabres, they can outdive you and they will cut you off. You're not as fast as say a T2 and F100. So your speed isn't a, a free ticket to win. So the first thing I want that are mostly the T2s and the MiG-19s. You're seeing a lot of mixed at the moment, but if you can fight versus these kinds of planes, the T2s, then fighting an F-100 shouldn't be that much of a problem either. You can also see that I am very 
very busy only going for the T2s. I can't really give less of a shit if there's something else on me, because I want those planes dead first. There is very little I can do if I have to carry it versus to F40s. Well, also a T2 that's running me down. So I want those planes dead. And now the MiG-19 comes to me, which is actually uh, very helpful of him. Of course, he uh, he does stick on me. And the second T2 uh, also comes in, which is a bit sketchy, to say the least. But in the end, it all worked out fine. He broke off for me to get a shot on someone else. And this is pretty much the moment he killed himself. The moment you're at low speeds, especially below 800, in a MiG-19 versus these kind of planes, even versus the F2, but the CLB especially. I crit him a little bit, he moves around and he just loses all of his energy. I thought he was going to crash here, so I didn't stick with him. But he uh, somehow pulled out of it. And I can see that everyone is converging behind me, except for these two. But the T2 seems to not really care about me since when he broke off. And the F40 is going into that furball as well. So I want to make sure that this MiG-19 dies and that I didn't just waste all my ammo critting him when he can just repair. So I want to make sure that he dies. Luckily he's very slow, easy shot. Goes into the ground, T2 in the background dies as well, very happy with that. And luckily this one waited just long enough for me to uh, break off, re-engage. Trying to reverse him but he's smart enough to uh, turn away. And he runs to his base. I try to shoot a missile, but the missile just, uh, I don't know what it did. He dodged it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. At this point, I'm uh, pretty low on ammo. And I'm noticing that my team is crumbling beneath me. So I'm a bit uh, skeptical about winning this one. Now, sure, I always have the hope that you can win it in the end. But at this point, I was thinking that uh, it's a certain loss. And they're all combined in one group. Which isn't really helpful when you don't have a lot of ammo. I need to go through them to, to go to my base. So at this point I didn't really know what to do. I was hoping to push ahead on and hope that they would all fly past me, go to their base. And maybe stick on my teammate. So that I have the room to uh, to land and rearm. Because if I don't rearm, then I'm obviously not going to win this. I have one missile and 260 rounds. 280, excuse me. And then they started to rip. And another one crashed. And it started to look a bit more... Doable. A lot more doable actually. And I noticed that there was only one going after me. And they were going vertical. So I thought, I only have 200 rounds. But maybe, just maybe, I can kill one that stalled before I rearm. And that would make it a lot more... A lot easier. A lot easier to, to carry this game. He uh, went head on with me even though I didn't see him. So I wasn't going to risk it. He's still going vertical. I notice that he's very very slow. I have 200 rounds and... Just the last few just killed him. I'm very happy it did. I wanted to go vertical but I wasn't too sure about the CL that's also in the cloud still. So I decided not to. I'm not spotted at the moment so I try to dive away. Out of the clouds towards the base. It's very close right now. The only problem is that if they do spot me, they will spot me very quickly. And then I saw this at T2 and I was a bit... Uh, yeah. At this point, this very point right here, I thought I was dead. Not because of him, but because there's a CL in the clouds. I have to engage this dude and then he kills the T2. And I think, maybe I can missile this dude. And if I connect this missile... Then we probably win. Because the CL is nowhere to be found. The dude that killed five of my teammates is RTB. Because he's either low on fuel, low on ammo especially. Because 50 cals, don't quote me on this, don't feel as prominent. In my opinion. So I was guessing that he's RTB. But he's not. There he is. And now he's dragging them all away from the base. Which is, as you can see in the chat as well, exactly what I want him to do. And he's doing it. He's doing it rather well as well. Normally when I ask people to do that, they come back to the base and uh, get three people to shrave me. But in this case, luckily not the case. I rearmed, 
he, he survived too. They all went RTB. Shell started to run the space. But I loaded min fuel because it's 2v1. The, the other T2 ran out of fuel and bailed out. Or crashed, I don't know. He died mid game, mid, mid map. So I uh, loaded min fuel because there's two sabers. I need to be able to dogfight them. Because the F40 and the CL, it's a 2v1. I was guessing, of course, I still have the teammate, but I wasn't sure how prominent he was going to be. And the CL just doesn't see me. I'm very happy I ran min fuel in the end. Of course, the min fuel on this plane, in my opinion, is very, very low. It's only six and a half minutes, which basically makes you feel like uh, an OB's 163, which is something I'm not really a fan of. And the acceleration of this thing is better with 20 minutes than the F40 with min fuel. The only problem is the CL, but when I saw him run like that, he was climbing. I saw him climbing like that before I landed, so I knew that he was running a big fuel load probably. So I decided to pick min fuel to be able to outperform them both. Of course, it's a bit risky when you don't see the other one, so I have three and a half minutes left, so I start to run at uh, 65, 67%. Just to conserve a little bit of fuel. I have a feeling that I'm fast enough. I'm at four and a half kilometers. So I also lose use a bit less fuel. And I'm just at this point is waiting. I decide to dive towards the base because I'm not too sure where he is. My teammate is spotted by the blind hunt at the moment. So I'm guessing that he's gonna attract him. And there he is. Lo and behold, I accidentally went for him. I go vertical in the hope that he follows me. And maybe the teammate can pick him off. Of course, I won the kill. Don't get me wrong. But it's the safest way. He decides to go head-on with the F40. They luckily don't full commit head-on. I tap him once because I'm actually afraid that they, uh, they will bail on me. That's something that has been happening quite a lot lately. The last few days. Forgive my aim, but I have 1800 rounds and I only have one dude to kill. So I want to make sure that... Uh, I get that nice six kill for the for the video, of course. A couple of games after that, I have a G91Y on me. He has been following me for a bit. I airbrake a little bit because I don't want to compress and give him a shot. And I'm putting this one in. The kill itself is a bit sloppy and a bit stupid, but it showcases very well how much more maneuverable this thing is over the G91Y has. I can just dance around him. Of course, he has a lot better energy in the terms of acceleration, but he loses way more in a turn. I even air broke. He turned with me and were pretty much as fast, and of course he can out accelerate me. But when I'm point three on you, you know, you're not getting away. And I wanted to make sure to keep shooting above him, so he started rolling down, rolling down, rolling down. And he actually went into the water, which is... Uh, I didn't expect it to work, but you know, when it does, I'm not going to complain. A little bit later, other game of course. I'm fighting a G91R4 and I heard a lot of people saying that Sabers can dogfight uh, the G91s because they are so nimble, they have really good acceleration and that's all true, yes. But there's one thing a lot of people forget that the G91 has a very poor retention, it has horrible top speed acceleration and especially that uh, that's the retention is just going to curb it. Of course, it's still very squirmy and it's hard to hit, especially due to the size and how unnatural the turn is. So I don't want to commit to him. I get a hit, I miss a lot of it, and I break off. And you can see we went, we were going around the same speed when he was on me. I did a loop. I turned back in and look at the separation I'm gaining now because he did a couple of turns. I'm still only going 700. But I guess he's not going much faster than 450, 500. And once the Saber is faster than you in the G91 and it's above you, there is very little you can do. Of course, this is a CL13B. It's a lot better than, say, an F40 than, say, an F2. But the principle is around the same. So I thought I'd put it in anyways, just to have a little showcase. This is one of the earlier games, but I decided to, to put it at the end for a couple of reasons. It's... Uh, a not very likely scenario and I want to put the stuff in that's the most important at the start because well if you click it off and you, you decide to not want to watch anymore you're not missing out on a lot and that's why I put these things at the end so I have a MiG-19 he was air braking me so uh, I just go up of course there's very good acceleration 
but it's not a plane that has one-to-one -one thrust to weight, so it can just nose up and catch me, which is nice, to say the least. And now we get an F40 that's trying to cut me off, so I just go in a slight climb, I start a turn, of course he's going to catch me for a little bit, which is exactly what I want him to do. He shoots a missile, I go full turn, full turn, full turn, and he sees that I'm catching. He's catching me. And I dip my nose a little bit, get some more separation, and I go up again. And at this point there is very little he can do. Of course he can just dive away, which is uh, what he will do. But his friend over there seems to uh, have other ideas. He probably thinks that I'm going for his teammate. Which was my initial plan, but I see him go up, turn away from me, pretty much give me a stall shot, which is, oh, it does, the, the shot doesn't get more perfect than this, like, of course, except for me missing everything. But, now the F40 disappears, he's running away, I was expecting to uh, pull in here and then go up and over, but then I saw three people coming in, so I couldn't do it anymore. This is a very sad game, I got extremely lucky, and then in the end, uh, well, you'll, you'll see what happens, it's... Uh, quite a spicy meme, to say the least. I'm uh, guessing the F40 here runs min fuel, so I don't want to reverse him, especially with all this shit around me, because the T2 keeps doing these very wide loops to keep his speed up, and it's very hard to get a T2 and an F40 off your tail. Sadly enough, that's exactly what I'll have to do. But what I want to do is get some little bit of separation between the F40 and the T2, so that I can turn in the T2 while dodging a shot, and then set myself up for the, the dogfight with the F40. Because when the F40 is too close, he can just air break you, he'll spark yourself on your 6, and there's nothing you can do. So he's about 2 kilometers away, and I start to turn in. I want to make sure that I dodge his shells, and I do. And then in about 1 kilometer, I have a 90 degree shot on the F40. Unfortunately, the T2 didn't do what I was expecting him to do, so I had to restart it again. Of course, I still have the acceleration on the F40, especially at higher speeds. 19 YS crashes, luckily. Barely dodged the missile. And this time, it's not as ideal as I want it to be. But I have very little choice. I have to dodge the T2, and the F40 will get close enough when that happens. There you can see the useless gun of the F40. F40 is uh, air braking me. After I throttle dropped, I noticed that, so I want to go up, he nicked my wing there. And this is the lucky part, I survived a lot of shells in this, uh, this scenario, I'm not used to that. Get a hit on the T2, just to scare him off a little. Misjudged the F40, pull back into his guns, he misses me. And at this point, I'm very safe. As long as the, F40, if the T2 doesn't re-engage me. I can keep this loop, loop up for quite a long time, I have to slash like he does. But the problem is he has min fuel and he has a lot less weight. Luckily my engine is a lot stronger of course. So I want to go in this very slight spirally turn. And that's my teammate. I saw my teammate come in. I have some salt in the chat. But I saw my teammate came in and I thought to myself, he's gonna kill me isn't he? I turn in front of him, I go in between my teammate and him. And of course he hoses me down, doesn't kill the F40 in the process, and we lose. I was uh, I was pretty salty, I'm not gonna lie. But you know, uh, that's just part of the game I guess.